Oh, hello. Today's lesson is on solving trigonometric equations. So what do we mean by solving trig equations? Well, a trig equation is any equation that's got a trig ratio in it. So here's the most simple one. Sine x equals a half. We know that solving an equation means finding a value for, for x for which the equation is true. Um, so in this case, is it as simple as just saying, well, x equals one of the values, if I look up my table of exact values, I know that when x is equal to pi on 6, sine of pi on 6 is equal to a half, so there I've found a value. Have I done it? It would be nice if it was that simple, but it's not quite that simple, and let's talk about why. First of all, if we're asked to solve the equation x squared equals 4, we know that you can just simply take the square root of 4 and say x equals 2. Have you solved it? And the answer is no. You haven't given all the solutions, because we also know that x equals negative 2 is a solution as well. And similarly, when we're solving trig equations, the point is not just can we come up with a value that works, can we come up with every value that works. That is going to cause a problem. Let's have a look. Here's our unit circle, and we know that sine of pi on 6, so if this angle here is pi on 6, then this length here, uh, let me draw it in red, this length here is sine of pi on 6, and so that value there is a half, which means their height off the line of that point P um, is going to be a half. Now if we think about whereabouts, what angles around here do we get an answer of a half? Well, it's clearly going to occur here, but if that's our y value, that's our line y is equal to a half, we're going to get a solution there, and we're going to get a solution there. So we're going to get two solutions. But there's nothing to say that we're only going to get those two solutions, because we're going to get one here at pi on 6, and we're going to get, let me go around the circle in green, I'm going to go around in green, I get a solution here, and I get a solution here and I get a solution here, and I get a solution here, and I get a solution here, and I get a solution here. And what should be obvious is that if we don't restrict our domain at all, if we don't say where we're looking for solutions, there are actually infinite solutions. So there are infinite solutions to that problem, which is going to cause a bit of a problem for us if we're trying to list them all. So what do we do instead? Well, Rather, there's a problem with the question, and in this course, every time you're asked to solve a trigonometric equation, you will be given a domain. So a much more, question, much more common question will be, what is the value of sine x, where does sine x equal a half over the domain 0 to 2 pi? Or it could be four, 0 to 4 pi, or it could be negative to 2 pi to 2 pi, or it could be something a bit stranger, like 3 pi on 2 to 7 pi on 2. Um, and it won't always be a period away. Uh, in this case, we know that the period of the sine function is 2 pi. And so this is, this is essentially asking the question, where are the solutions in one period of our graph? Um, but it won't always be one period. So let's answer that question instead. Sine x equals a half over the domain 0 is equal to 2 pi to 2 pi sorry, over the domain x equals 0 to 2 pi. How I start by answering this question is by working out what quadrants my solution is in. My solutions are going to be in. First of all, we're looking for sine, and we're looking for a positive value. So I always start with a diagram that looks like this, and I'm going to get a solution in that quadrant and a solution in that quadrant. As I go round from 0 to 2 pi, that means I'm going to get one solution around here somewhere and one solution around here somewhere. Where are those solutions? Well, we know that the next step that we always do is write out our base angle. B base angle is equal to, and what we're asking here is what is the angle in quadrant 1 in this quadrant here? What is the angle in that quadrant that meets my requirements? In this case, sine x equals a half. We've already identified that pi on 6 is a solution, and pi on 6 is in my uh, quadrant 1, so that's going to be my base angle. Thus, I know that I'm going to get solutions. Let me draw a clean unit circle here. That means we're going to get solutions going up was pi on 6, and since we also, let's look at this diagram, since we also get solutions 
going upwards, we're going to get a solution in quadrant 1 and a solution in quadrant 2, which is going to be this angle here. And through symmetry, we know that that is pi minus pi on 6. And thus, our answers, solutions, are x equals pi on 6 and pi plus pi on 6. We're going to be doing lots of sort of fraction addition here to turn these numbers into something a little bit more palatable. 7 pi on 6. Those are my two answers. When you get when you finish, double check that they're both inside the given domain that you're expected to. So that's how solving equations works, but it is going to get more difficult. Let me give you one more example. Uh, all right, so let's have a look at a slightly harder one. There's a few extra complications here that we'll see as we go into it. Um, immediately two complications should jump out at you. The fact that we don't have one ratio equals one simple value that we had in the previous one and that our domain is something not really standard. We're going to have to think about how that affects us later on. So we can't really solve a trig equation looking at this one here. We can't really solve it unless we get it into the form of cos x equals something. Um, or cos could be sine or tan. So as long as we've got one ratio here and on the other side is one value and that value occurs in our table of exact values. So a thing like root 2 on 2 or uh, 1 or 0 or any of those values. Um, as long as we get a ratio, a, a, an equation to that form, we're okay. So our first step is obviously going to be getting it into that form. Let's rub that out and we'll see how we go. First of all, we're trying to isolate x, so let's get rid of everything that's not x. I'm going to get rid of that um, plus root 2 first by turning this into 2 cos x equals negative root 2. Now I'm going to divide by 2 and I can get cos x equals negative root 2 on 2. Uh, excellent, we're now at the right point, and so I should immediately identify what my base angle is in my unit circle. There's going to be one angle in quadrant one that matches this. Now it won't necessarily be matched with positive or negativity, but it will have this value of negative root, of root two on two. And sure enough, we can look up our table of exact values, and we know that our base angle is going to be equal to pi on four. That's going to be the solution that matches here with symmetry. But, but pi on 4 isn't actually a solution to our problem because we need cos to be negative. So on this diagram, I actually um, wouldn't use this line here. I just start with a diagram that looks like that. Um, let me rub it all out and I'll show you what my standard working would be. So I determine the base angle like I've just done there. And then I would also draw a diagram that looks like this and identify, okay, cos is negative. Whereabouts do we have cos negative? We've got one there and one there, so that's where we're going to get solutions. How many solutions have I got? That's where I'm going to go up here and look at my domain and identify, okay, well, I've got starting at negative pi, which is here on my unit circle, uh, so I'm going to start going down that way. I get to zero, and then I get to pi on two, and then I get to pi, and then I get to three pi on two, and that's where I finish. So I'm going to get one solution in this part of it, and then another solution in this part of it, and then another solution in this part of it. So I should end up with three solutions. The first solution, we're starting at negative pi and we're going down, and so that's going to give me an answer of x is equal to negative pi plus, since we're going clockwise, negative pi plus my base angle plus pi on 4. My next solution will occur so we've gone past 0, then we've gone part to pi, but I need to go back because there'll be a solution up there somewhere. Whoops, that was a bit curved. Up there somewhere, um, and that is going to be pi minus my base angle. So I'm also going to get a solution at pi minus pi on 4. And this is going to be my third solution here, which is going to occur at pi plus pi on 4. There's a lot of similarity here with the work that we were doing earlier, identifying through symmetry where angles are, and essentially what we're doing now is identifying our base angle, this one here, and then identifying through symmetry where those that equivalent angle might occur in the uh, quadrants that we've identified through the fact that we're looking at cos is negative, and tying all that into our domain as well. So there is a lot going on here. Um, 
if you can get this stuff, if you can answer these sorts of questions, you'll be right for the bulk of trigonometric equations. This is the, the bread and butter sort of question. We haven't quite finished it yet, I should point out, um, because we like to make our answers more wholesome, do a little bit of fraction addition. This is the same as negative 1 plus a quarter, lot of pi, uh, and so that gives us negative 3 pi on 4, and here we've got pi minus a quarter, so that's uh, pi on, sorry, 3 pi on 4, and here we've got pi plus pi on 4, and that's 5 pi on 4. You're going to get very good at this simple fraction addition. Those are our three solutions, uh, and so that's where we can leave it. There are plenty of questions in the textbook that are good for practicing these uh, before we get on to more difficult things. Essentially, you can identify a more difficult thing. All the ones I've looked at so far only have x inside the brackets. We've deal, dealt with what happens if there's coefficient outside the brackets or other values, but you haven't seen something like cos of 2x minus pi on 4 is equal to root 2 on 2. That's what we're going to be tackling uh, in the next set of questions, but for now, let's practice these simpler ones. Good luck.